Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to Not Perfect Zen. Um, I realize it's been maybe over two weeks since I did a video um, with family things going on and now what's going on in the world. I just had I'll just say high anxiety, and um, <laughs> I've also tried several videos in the last couple of weeks that for one reason or another, mostly um, user error, <laughs> they just didn't work out, and um, I'm going to make this work today, okay? So um, this one's going to be a little bit different in that I am going to start by telling you about uh, something I heard from Instagram, maybe Instagram or Facebook first. But there is a lady who is uh, a tangler. She does entangle, but she's not a CZT, but she is in the Ukraine. She has an Etsy store. And she posted to say that um, for anyone who bought one of her PDF eBooks, that all the money would be sent to Ukrainian troops to support them. So I bought this one that says uh, Zen Game. And uh, just wanted to show you real quick what it is. Um, Again, this is her information on Etsy. It's Hobby Room Creation. And her Instagram name is at hobby underscore room underscore WW. And if you go to her Instagram page, you can get a link to her Etsy page. But I will also put a link in the description. How do you do, how they do that below? <laughs> okay, uh, her name is Olya, and I did notice uh, that she added to one of her Instagram stories recently to say that she had already received a thousand dollars and passed that on to support the troops. Um, but anyway, I just want to show you real quick. <clears throat> excuse me. The thing that I bought, like I said, was the Zen game and I printed it out. And this is just to show you how it works. Um, she has the patterns that are numbered one through 20. And then the idea is to get a tile and uh, create a string, any kind of string that you wanna put on there. And then to roll the dice, Okay, so this is called an icosahedron. It's a 20-sided die. And I got a set of them off of Amazon, but they also sell them at Zentangle, <clears throat> excuse me, because they had one that was used in one of their project packs. So if I roll my die, and this one came up at 17, then, this would be the first pattern that I would put on my tile. Now, what's nice is that she also has the step outs for each of these. So I would go to the step out for number 17, which is Fracas by Zentangle. And like I said, she has each of the step outs. And then once you finish that section, then roll your dice. Again, this one says seven. So that's that one. And I would go to the step out for that. Um, this is the second Zen game. So you can see some of the patterns there. And you can see this and some of the other information when you go to her Etsy page. And there's number three. And also she has a number four. But that's not all that she has. Let me bring this back over. She does 
mandalas. And she has PDF instructions uh, for drawing mandalas and Celtic patterns. She has stencils, but you can't order the stencils right now because she cannot ship those out of the Ukraine. So I just want to show you real quick. This is the tile that I did using her game. I simply did this string, which is an arc with two lines coming off of it and reminds me of the sun. And so that gives you five sections. And I will admit that when I started doing that one, I wasn't sure that I liked how it was turning out. But after I put the shading and a little bit of highlighting, I like it. So if you get this uh, game from her, I would encourage you to try some of these patterns. Uh, one of the reasons that my video didn't go well yesterday was that I rolled the dice and got one that um, I had never done before. And it just came out terrible. I'll be the first to admit. If you don't feel good about a pattern that you selected, then roll again, or just pick any pattern that you like, okay? Okay, sorry, I just had a knock at the door, so I'm not sure exactly what I was saying, but um, if you don't wanna buy this game, uh, just think about ways that you could also use this idea to do your own tiles. Um, like I have these little two by two cards that I use to keep track of patterns that I've learned and that I like. So you could make your own little thing and make your own little game so that you could create tiles by rolling a dice and picking one of these and putting it on your tile. So just ideas that you could use. Um, okay, let me keep this here for a minute. Uh, when I wanted to do a tile for the Ukraine, I uh, searched for sunflower patterns and I found this one, which is called Sunflower by Olha Abramova. And this one is Mindy Sunflower by Nicole Dreyer. Now this one is one that I did this morning. I followed a 15 minute tutorial from Kelly Bluen. She is a CZT. I actually went to a CZT seminar with Kelly. And so she has a YouTube video for this pattern. And I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the description also. Um, but this is just a very simple tile that I did. I already have it in my disc binder. And so this is what I'm gonna show you today. And I might put this one on there. So show you how to do one of these and then show you how to do this sunflower also as sunflowers for the Ukraine. Uh, this is a tile that I have cut on my, you know, myself because it goes in my disk system and that's why you have these cuts at the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am going to first try to relax and I'm going to put four corner dots. And then a border. Okay. 
And I'm going to go ahead, I think, and I'm going to use, because um, blue and yellow are the colors of the Ukraine flag, I'm going to use blue on this today. That's what I did on that other tile that I showed you. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. And this one, I put a border. Um, you can see that I had put the border down here and that ended up going over the whole thing with uh, Lindy's Magical Watercolors. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and put just a thin border inside. And then my idea is that I might come back and do some squares of uh, blue and yellow. Okay, so I'm going to start in this corner. Actually, I'm going to start down here. And I'm going to show you this sunflower. And the way that one works is come up and you're doing almost like a little fescue, okay? And then I'm gonna come from the other side, do the same thing. And then we put kind of an aura starting just below that one. Come in and come back around, okay? <clears throat> Zoom in for you here. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to start just close to that. And oops, almost forgot. We have one more little thing here. Okay. And then we can just continue. Then we're going to go around this a little wiggly. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's not meant to be perfect. She does have a little bit of a wiggle in hers and then there's another one to come around that does the same thing and then back in okay and then the next thing that we do is we're going to put just the lines right here between each petal. So depending on how big you want to make those petals determines how far apart you put these. Okay, and then we're just gonna keep coming around. And then as we get closer to the bottom, they're gonna be short. Okay, same thing, this direction. I made that one a little bit fat. I, uh, hang on a sec, my cell phone thing is in the way. Okay, so I couldn't see very well. Okay. And now we're going to go to the tops of these and just add the top of each petal, bring it back down. This one, 
these are going to be shorter. And this is as if you're looking at the sunflower from the bottom. Come back around. And these aren't perfect. That's okay. If you look closely at flowers, they aren't perfectly symmetrical either. This one's a little bit big, but that's okay. It's the middle one. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to put three lines or as many as you would like just up the center of each of these petals. The center one, I'm making them just a little bit longer than the two to the side of it. Okay, so that is sunflower. And you can see that with the shading, you can add a little bit of highlight around it. Now I'm gonna to come to the other side and show you how I did this one, okay? And it's, kind of like henna drum, but the petals are made more similar to this one. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put an inner aura here. And you can do this however you want. I'm going to put some orbs in here. And this is different from henna drum. But as I've always said, this is your art. Do it the way that you like. Do what you enjoy. And then I'm going to do the cross hatching. So I'm just going to put thin parallel lines. across here. Okay, and I'm not going to go straight across. I want to come back across at a little bit of an angle. And then these end up looking more of a diamond type effect. Okay, and then we're going to do very similar to what we did on this. And then I'm going to put some petals going this way. And this is a little bit different, or definitely different from what we do on uh, in a drum. That one's a little bit wider, but that's okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. Put these petals on the top.
Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Add some lines. And then with Hinodrum, I like to put an aura on the outside of the petals. So I'm going to do that here also. Okay, so there are our two sunflowers. Zoom that out just a tiny bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put some squares. And I always worry about getting these to look just right. Let's just go ahead and come across. Again, we're not looking for perfection. And my plan is to come back and fill these in with yellow and blue. I have not done that. <laughs> On my other one, it was just solid blue, but I think it would be pretty. Okay, it's working out fairly good as far as getting these squares even. If you have watercolor brush pens, you could use those to color this in. But I do find that uh, Lindy's Magicals, that's what uh, I did here. They have very bright colors and the colors happen to be pretty close to the colors on the Ukraine flag. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, so I do have two uh, brush pins, watercolor brush pins that I think would work pretty well for this. First, I'm going to try adding a little bit of shading because I have seen where others have done this even um, Kelly when I was watching her for that um, for this sunflower she did her shading and then she did some color on top of that so let's try it because if you're not going to color it you do need to, to know how to shade it 
and then get my blending stump. And I'm just gonna pull that out toward the center. It actually looks brown for some reason. So I have my kneaded eraser. And this is like an emery board. I'm going to clean that blending stump. Okay, and then go back and try this again. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of color or shading rather on the tips of the flowers. And then just push that a little bit towards the center so that you just have a little bit of shading on the very tip of each flower petal. And <laughs> as I'm doing this, I'm thinking this is the bottom of the petal, the bottom of the flower. I'm not sure you'd have a highlight like this, but it's still gonna look good. Okay, and then just soften this so that you keep the highlight going around here. Okay, now I'm gonna get my blue micron again. And I'm going to come in to the center here. And I'm going to color that in, but I'm going to leave a little bit of white at the tip of each of these. A little bit of a highlight. OK. And if you wanted to, you could even fill in one of these. So let's do that. That's one of her options in her step outs. So we're just adding some drama. Okay. And then I'm going to go over, <clears throat> excuse me, to this one. And I'm going to darken this aura.
or fill it in rather. That's given us a little bit of drama on each side. And I didn't do this on my other in a drum sunflower, but I thought I'd try it. So you can see some options. And I found the step outs for these on Pinterest um, for this one. And um, Melinda Barlow has also done a video on that pattern. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we would basically shade this one pretty much the same as what we did here, except I'm not going to put it up on the top because we already have filled that part in. I don't think we need it. So add some shading down here. I'm going to add some shading on this side also. And then soften that. And pull it toward the center. Soften this one and leave the section right here not shaded. And that makes it look like this is raised up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to take this color and hope that this <laughs> works out right. And I'm going to fill this in with yellow. Now, sometimes I find that a yellow watercolor or yellow marker can make my permanent ink move around on the page, which it shouldn't, and I don't know why it does, but I can see a little bit here where it's doing that. So I'm going to do it slow and easy. And when I get to this part, just kind of pull it up. Now the yellow looks different on the screen than it does on my page, but that's because I'm using an iPhone and I can rarely get my iPhone colors to look right. And I, I don't want to buy a document camera. Okay, let's do the same thing on this one. The color looks much better in person. <laughs> when I um, take the photo to put it 
on the thumbnail and to use for my um, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram photos, I'll try to get it to uh, look better. Okay, and I do have a finer tip on here. So I can see on the big screen that this very edge isn't fully filled in. Okay. Now I'm going to um, do these corners, or the border rather. So I'm just going to very quickly do every other color and hope that <laughs> this works out right. You could do other patterns inside your tile if you wanted to. I do have that other sunflower, but to me, it didn't really look like a sunflower. You could even put a message across here. Oh, I hope this works out right. Yay, you did. <laughs> All right, so my blue. And I could have used this blue in here, but I wanted to show you that you could do it with your pen. Okay, so we're going to do these in blue. And I'm not going to speed this up on my video, but you're welcome to always fast forward through some of these things. Trying to be careful with these squares. <clears throat> and I keep being bothered by that little spot right there. So I am going to get my jelly roll. See if I can cover a little bit. Not sure what happened there, but covered it a little. That's okay.
my heart goes out to everyone in the Ukraine and in Europe. This is a very frightening time. I cannot imagine having to leave my home and my city and my country not knowing, first of all, if I would see my family again, you know, leaving brothers, sons, husbands, fathers behind to fight a war. Okay, so. Sorry, that's why I've been so anxious lately. So this tile is a prayer for peace. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I might come back and add you know, a few details, clean it up a little bit. I don't like how my writing comes out so I'm not going to put anything across here but um, I'll probably just leave it like that thank you for joining me <clears throat> I hope uh, that maybe you can help support Olya and the people in Ukraine in any way even if it's just through your thoughts and prayers Thank you for joining me and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, please share if you think someone would be interested in um, Olya's Etsy site. Thanks again and I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.